For the early life of Linux, most of our GUIs were powered by X11, initially in the form of X386, then with Xorg. There were a few exceptions along the way, like Murr, yeah, that one happened, and a couple of people even used Arkin. But now we're in the middle of transitioning to a new paradigm, Wayland. But Linux isn't the entire Unix-like world. What about the BSD side of things? Well, FreeBSD is a lot earlier in the process than Linux is, but it's certainly in the process. Things like Sway, they work just fine. Other WL Roots compositors like LabWC, Wayfire, River, and Hyperland all work to some extent. Now, considering they are made with Linux first in mind, they may not be exactly the same experience. But then there is another WL Roots compositor developed for FreeBSD first, that being Hikari. This also works on Linux, but Linux is sort of the afterthought. FreeBSD is the main platform. But all of these just offer a window manager experience, either tiling, or in the case of Hikari, a floating window manager. But what about the desktop environments? Now, these are kind of still in the process of properly working on Linux. So the BSD side is not even a concern for most of them. But that doesn't mean there is nothing that works. There has been a lot of effort to get KDE Wayland working. Much like KDE Wayland on Linux, it's a little bit flaky. But even though it's flaky, it does work. Some older versions just wouldn't work at all. Some older versions with black screen on SDDM and you have to just avoid the display manager altogether, but the desktop itself was working. But Gnome Wayland on the other hand, that one I can't find any positive information on. But besides that one, the FreeBSD project has fully accepted that Wayland is something their users might want to use. There is even official FreeBSD documentation on what Wayland is and how a FreeBSD user might go about using it. Even things like common alternatives. If you're using Compiz, maybe you want to use something like Wayfire. If you're using i3, maybe you want to go and use Sway. But much like Linux is not the entire Unix-like world, FreeBSD is not the entire BSD world. There are other systems out there, like NetBSD. Their position is... not very positive. And this is one of the common blog posts shared around by people who think Wayland is never going to work. What some of them don't realise is they can't read. Wayland on NetBSD, Trials and Tribulations. The Wayland reference implementation is a small set of libraries that can be used to build a compositor or a client application. These libraries currently have hard dependencies on Linux kernel APIs like ePoll. In package source, we've patched the libraries to add KQ support, but the patches haven't been accepted upstream. Wayland is written with the assumption of Linux to the extent that every client application tends to include Linux slash input dot H because Wayland designers didn't see the need to define an OS neutral way to get mouse button IDs. So far, all Wayland compositors but SWC have a hard dependency on lib input, which only supports Linux input API, also cloned in FreeBSD. This is a very important part. In NetBSD, we have an entirely different input API, WSCons. WSCons is fairly simple to write code for, someone just needs to go out there and do it. You can use my code in SWC as a reference. I've decided to take a break from this since it's a fairly huge undertaking and uphill battle. Right now, X11 combined with a compositor like PyCom or XComp MGR is a more mature option. The answer is not, well yes, Wayland is biased towards Linux, it does not break BSD. FreeBSD has an implementation to make it work, it is NetBSD and also OpenBSD that have the problem. And I have read on occasion, don't expect Wayland to ever come to OpenBSD. But is that really true? Is it never going to be there? Well, you can see the video isn't over. This developer, Matthew Herb, just got Sway, a Wayland compositor running on OpenBSD. It is still very, very alpha though, but it does work. Also, nice little touch, it is running on a framework laptop. It doesn't really matter, but it is cool to see them out in the wild. This work came out of a recent hackathon in, I'm gonna butcher this, Tallinn, I think, Estonia. 
at G2K 2023. And along with another picture of it running, he includes a write-up of basically what was being done. It's just notes of the process, not a very clear and well-defined blog post. But if you like living on the edge, and you don't really care if your system randomly crashes, there is build instructions on how to get all of this stuff working. Keep in mind, very, very alpha, and it should not be used on a production system. At least a production system that you care about and you trust to be reliable. The dev explicitly says, I don't know much about Wayland internals. I'm discovering that on the way. So some stuff here may look naive or totally wrong to experienced Wayland developers. The build instructions below will probably break your system. Use a separate machine for this. Sway will crash the kernel during setup from time to time. I don't know if it's a problem specific to the DRR driver for the Intel Iris 12th gen GPU on my test laptop or a general bug. To do, Test on a machine with a serial console to get a backtrace if possible. And right now the focus is on the WL Roots library, compositors that use it, and applications that run on those compositors. When it comes to other things like GNOME or GCK based systems and QT based systems, well, that's someone else's problem to deal with. That can happen later. But for those GTK applications, there are some simple patches to build GTK3 and GTK4 with Wayland support enabled. The GTK3 demo works exactly like it should. And things like Emacs and Firefox will work, but they don't use the Wayland version. Instead, they run through X Wayland. There needs to be some additional porting to make that happen. As for GTK4, the demo fails to start, it still tries to connect to an X server, and then seg faults. So while some GTK4 applications might work, the full demo is causing something, so some applications are probably going to break as well. And yes, I hadn't explicitly mentioned it, but X Wayland is working. And considering the state this is currently in, X Wayland is how you're going to be using most of your applications. Now, as for the QT applications, QT5 and 6 are normally built with Wayland support. Trying a QT5 application, KeyPass XC, it couldn't connect to the compositor. And QT6, for some reason, didn't build on his system. So that doesn't work either. Another problem is OpenBSD is not Linux, and Linux has some things that OpenBSD doesn't. For example, UTF32 support, which some Wayland applications do use internally. This is not available on OpenBSD. There is an implementation that exists over on Dragonfly BSD, and by having this, applications like Foot likely are going to work. This is a relatively popular Wayland first terminal. As for screen lockers like Swaylock, there's no reason why these shouldn't work. The only problem is Linux doesn't use the same authentication system that BSD does. It uses PAM, Pluggable Authentication Modules. BSD uses Auth. So either the applications need to be modified to support Auth, Auth needs to be modified to have some sort of interface to interact with PAM, or some other system to make the authentication work. And do you remember that NetBSD blocker of getting input working? Well, the same issue exists over on OpenBSD as well. Wayland applications expect Linux input model with UDEV, EVDEV, and lib input. UDEV is used to probe available devices and handle hot plugging on Linux. OpenBSD doesn't have it, and the current state of Hotplug-D doesn't make it possible to really emulate UDEV, but there is already a port available. EVDEV is the input event layer of the Linux kernel, similar to WSCONS underscore events in OpenBSD. It's mostly hidden by lib input, but event name translation need the lib EVDEV library for some reason. As for lib input, this is the library that permits reading EVDEV events from the Linux kernel and handling many of the higher level interpretation of the events, getting the keyboard mapping, mouse gestures, or multi-touch. But there is a port of lib input that exists, the first one being back in 2015 and then improved again in 2022. But a lot of work still needs to be done. And since Sway is Linux first, it also doesn't make use of additional OpenBSD functionality, like pledge 
and unveil. So these are OpenBSD functions for doing basically sandboxing. And from the brief bit I've read about them, it seems like they're a pretty sensible model. And that is pretty much the state that Whalen is in on OpenBSD. I don't want to ever hear again that Wayland cannot work on OpenBSD. It clearly can. It's still a work in progress, but it works. And the same can be true on NetBSD as well. The only thing is nobody's taken the time to implement it. And I'm not expecting anyone to do so, but it's not impossible. It's just a lot of time to do it. Will this be a start to a concerted effort to get Wayland working well on OpenBSD? I don't know. It might, it might not. It might just be a one-off thing and everybody just forgets about it. I don't know. Either way, it is really cool and I wish this developer and the rest of the BSD world the best of luck. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Are you a free BSD user, an open BSD user, a net BSD user, or have you never used BSD in your life? I would love to know. And if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon scribes that I verify linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... BSD is based.